Queridos televidentes, unas fallas en las computadoras no nos permiten llevarle a ustedes en toda su totalidad la entrevista que tuvimos hoy con el candidato a miembro del Congreso, Jay Inslee. Fue una entrevista bastante interesante, se habló de educación, de la salud, etcétera, etcétera, temas que son de bastante importancia para la comunidad de habla hispana. Como dije anteriormente, no nos fue posible llevársela a ustedes en toda su totalidad, pero quizás la próxima semana regresamos con ustedes totalmente en español. Muy buenas noches, quédense con KCJ Canal 17. Yo soy Jay Inslee, bienvenidos a Noticias Hispanos, Telemundo, su mundo. ¿Cómo están queridos televisas? Bienvenidos a un programa más de Matices Hispanos, KCJ Canal 17. Tenemos con nosotros al candidato a miembro del Congreso, Jane Inslee, que nos va a estar platicando de su involucramiento con la comunidad de habla hispana. Bueno, well, we talk about uh, education, labor, federal deficit, ESL, uh, uh, classes, etc., etc. Let's talk a little bit about what do you think about uh, the free trade between Mexico, United States, and Canada. Is that good for the United States? I, or is it bad? Or what is your opinion, Senor Inslee? Yes, yeah, thank you. I'll give you my opinion for free. How's that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that, uh, that knocking down trade barriers ultimately is going to be good for both countries, both America and Mexico. And the reason I say that is that, uh, I guess in my economic studies, I've come to conclude that barriers to trade ultimately are not, are not beneficial for either country. So I think knocking down barriers, allowing us to export to Mexico, allowing Mexico to export to us, will be good for both countries ultimately. However, I do say in the free trade agreement, before I would vote for it, I want to read it carefully because I also think that the free trade agreement should have requirements that Mexico improve its standards for working people, improve its minimum wage, improve its safety standards for working people, and improve its environmental standards. Excuse me, right there, but isn't mm -hmm. that the reason that uh, all, all these big companies move to Mexico because of uh, cheap labor? Well, less restrictions? What, their reasons are up to them, but I believe that ultimately we need to see Mexico move up in its labor standards rather than America move down. And we need to use this free trade agreement as a crowbar to, to lever Mexico up rather than lowering the United States standards. So, I'd want to see the free trade agreement before I vote for it and make sure that there are requirements that those standards come up, at least incrementally. I don't think it's realistic to ask Mexico to adopt our standards tomorrow. We're, 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 different, we're different cultures, we're, we have different histories, but we may not be able to, uh, to jump to the American standards, but we can at least make steady progress toward that, and I think that's very important. Uh, and I think uh, also, Um, and I've told a lot of people this, the most important thing to the Yakima Valley, or one of the very important things, is that the Mexican economy improve. Because when the Mexican economy improves, a lot of the difficulties that uh, America has with people who are in poverty and are coming here in extremely difficult situations, uh, will be able to stay in Mexico, will be able to have good jobs there. So I really believe um, it's in both uh, nations' interests that both improve economically. Union labels in the United States are not too happy about that. Why? Oh, I think, uh, I think uh, uh, people in, in the labor movement who are very, very good friends of mine, and I'm a very, very great supporter of working people's issues. Uh, last year in the legislature, I supported, I think, 100% of the issues that were important to working people, and those issues are very important to me. Minimum wage, uh, Fair Labor Standards Act, uh, unemployment compensation for people. Those are very important issues to me and I've supported working people very, very strongly in the state legislature. What I think the labor is interested in though is just what I said. Free trade's okay as long as it's fair trade. That means fair in the sense that you have some protections for working people in both communities and legal protections. And what and my friends in, in labor are telling me is, let's make sure that the free trade agreement does make that progress in Mexico, that Mexico makes that progress at least incrementally. Now, the faster the better, how fast is fast enough, we'll have to see. Um, but ultimately, I think it'll be in working people's benefit for everybody. for everybody if we get those trade barriers down, if at the same time, we insist that Mexico and help Mexico bring their standards up to American standards. And again, that won't happen tomorrow, but uh, in the future, I believe that it will. So. 
Should we get down with borders too? Border lines? Should we wish? Should we get down with border lines too? Destroy the borders? Uh, I don't think we can do that, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate that. There is a reason for having separate uh, communities, legal communities, and a border is part of that. Um, but the free trade should continue and should improve. Excellent. Well, let's uh, get to the one, do one million question. Uh -huh. Why does the Hispanic <laughs> should vote for you, Mr. Hinton? Well, I guess I'd hope that uh, folks in the Hispanic community would want to vote for me for the fam same reason people in every community in the, in the country would vote for me. And I would just give you a couple reasons. Number one, I'm a person who is not afraid to stick my neck out for what I believe. Uh, a lot of people said I shouldn't vote for the Children's Initiative, which would provide early childhood education to our children, and I did it. And a lot of people said that I shouldn't take various votes that I have in the legislature, but I've done it because they're things I believe in. And I think we need people in Congress that aren't afraid of taking uh, stands on tough issues, and I've done that uh, consistently. And so what I have to offer for people in Congress is a, a willingness to stand up for what I believe in. Second thing I think I have to offer to Congress is, a, is an ability and a, and a desire to listen to people. You know, a lot of people get back to Congress and they think they've been anointed by the Creator with all the answers. Well, I don't have all the answers. I need to talk to folks and find out what they want me to do back in Washington, D.C. And I think I have a very good ability to listen, uh, although I've been doing most of the talking today here. Um, <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> and uh, to kind of demonstrate that, one thing I'm going to do back in Washington, D.C. Is, is give everybody I represent my home phone number. You might take my place pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I couldn't do that. I've got to work on the language a little better, I suspect. But when I get back to Washington, D.C., I want to give everyone my home phone number so that they can call me. And if they can't get through me in the office and they've got a crisis and they need help, uh, they can give me a call back there. And it's something that I feel very strongly about. I also think that uh, we need to do things back there to improve Congress and improve the feeling that people have about Congress. That Congress shouldn't be just an aristocracy. Congress should be people who work for us, not the other way around. And one way to do that is to cut congressional salaries. You know, Congress's salaries went up a lot of other people's didn't. Congress is going to be involved in cutting budget because of the federal deficit. And when Congress does that, I think that we should cut Congress's salary so that they re can reestablish this sense of, uh, of trust in the American people. I'm very serious about that. I got a salary increase this last year and uh, tried to turn it down. and wouldn't let me turn it down, so I gave the money to charity. Gave it to uh, some groups like the YBC uh, Women's Scholarship Group and the like. Beautiful. Have you been in touch with the Hispanic literature? Yes, uh, as much as possible, and, and the most uh, important Hispanic uh, leader right now, at least in my opinion, is a, uh, a lady named Lisa Garza, who's not on camera here, but is with us in the room. And Lisa is uh, our campaign manager who grew up in Grandview. Uh, Ed and Amelia Garza uh, are her parents. She went to Grandview High School, and she and I have worked in the legislature for the last four years. And she's now uh, um, running our campaign and just doing a super job. So. Lisa, I sure uh, has a lot of friends in the in the Yakima Valley that I hope that she'll see when we have time for a, a party after the campaign. Um, a fellow I used to work with, uh, Rolando Adami, who's a, uh, an attorney, used to be in CELI, practice law for three years, and Rolando was a great guy to practice law with um, and gave me some really valuable insights into the Hispanic community and, and the needs of the Hispanic community. Rolando does work, uh, has done work uh, for people in uh, lawsuits. He's done some immigration work. And uh, he's been very helpful in, to me in knowing uh, the things I should know about the problems that face the community. So in other words, you think that you've been endorsed by the Hispanic community? Oh, I don't think I've got the endorsement of every single Hispanic person in Central Washington. But I do think that uh, because of the things I've been involved with in the legislature that are of, of interest, like the collective bargaining uh, bill for the Hispanic community for early childhood education, English as a second language. I think I've uh, probably uh, been uh, as attentive or more attentive than most anybody else, except maybe Margarita Prentice over in Renton, uh, to the needs of the community. So I feel very good and, and I welcome the support of any f folks who want to throw it behind me. You know that there is a, a recruitment program right now to recruit mm -hmm. 1,500 uh, Hispanic voters mm -hmm. for these elections. Mm -hmm. Would you like to have those 1,500? Uh, 1,501. <laughs> well, I hope I can count Lisa, but anyway. Uh, I, I got to tell you that uh, 
I really, really encourage people to get involved when they vote. And I can't tell you how frustrating it is when I go door to door. I knock on a lot of doors and people, and I'll meet lots of people. And, and we'll see, I'll go to five or six homes of people who are Hispanic members of the community. They're working, they've got a good job. They're good parents, they're raising children, the children are in school, maybe they're buying their first home. Really getting involved in the, in the community and becoming, having their roots in the Yakima Valley, which is great. Uh, but now we, we need to ask them to vote because we need their help, I need their help. People who believe in, uh, in these causes need their help. And also I found that when people vote, it feels good. It, it may not save the world, but, but it feels good. And uh, it makes you believe you got a stake in what's going on. So I really hope those efforts are successful. Let's have a special message for the Hispanic community. So, you know, mm -hmm. what, in, gen, in general terms, what did you have to say to them? One thing I'd have to say is that uh, uh, representing this area, Central Washington, is, uh, I think, the best district in the United States to represent. And one of the reasons I say that is that what the American dream has been over the last 220 odd years has, has been new people coming here, establishing themselves in the community, having multi-cultures in a community, and uh, making it real America. And I think that's the American dream. And if you, you want to look for the American dream, you come to Yakima. You meet people who are part of the American dream, who are coming to this country and bringing their new ideas, their new culture, their new creativity. And I think this is the best district to represent because we do have some extremely exciting things going on because, largely, because of the Hispanic folks coming uh, into our community, and I welcome that. And I tell you, it's, it's really exciting to hope to represent folks uh, at this time in this place. En un accidente se pierde tiempo en el trabajo, se tienen gastos médicos. ¿Quién protegerá sus derechos? A los ojos de la ley todos son tratados de igual manera, tal vez. Si usted está en una situación donde la ley se ha olvidado de sus derechos, usted necesita representación. Usted necesita a Contreras Trejo y Trejo. Con ellos tendrá la seguridad de que usted recibirá los derechos que garantizan las leyes. Calidad, experiencia y entendimiento. Llame a Contreras Trejo y Trejo hoy mismo, 453-8888. Disfrute la tortilla Guerrero como usted quiera, porque siempre cumple. No se rompe porque es fresca. Y al calentarla, queda bien suavecita. La tortilla Guerrero es blanca. Mm, y está siempre recién hecha. Para que saboree más de nuestra rica comida. Tortilla Guerrero, la cumplidora. En Yakima Motor Car Company en Union Gap, nuestros clientes son primero. Venga y vea nuestra gran selección de autos y camionetas con bajos enganches desde $199 y pagos mensuales tan bajos como $59. Financiamos sin requisitos bancarios y podemos ayudarle a establecer crédito con nuestra aprobación de crédito al instante. Nosotros queremos ser su compañía de carros. Venga a vernos en Yakima Motor Car Company sobre la Main Street en Union Gap. Gran festival en honor al trabajador campesino este domingo 6 de septiembre en los terrenos de la Feria de Tapnish. No te pierdas la gran presentación especial de Beatriz Adriana, la flor más bonita de México acompañada con banda Beatriz Adriana. Además, la migra y su cantante Sacramento. No te pierdas la gran actuación especial de la banda sinaloense, la auténtica Mazatlán y ocho grupos más. Los esperamos en los terrenos del rodeo de Tapnish este domingo 6 de septiembre. Las puertas se abrirán a las 2 de la tarde. Un evento de promociones Noé. Now I'm running for the United States Congress in Washington, D.C., and this is the job that Sid Morrison now holds. And uh, he's vacating that position. He's leaving and he's running for governor. So there's an open seat, and I'm running for his spot in Congress in Washington, D.C. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, now let's go to the topic, okay? Let's you talk bet. about the Hispanic community. Okay. Uh, what is your involvement, involvement with the Hispanic community in terms of education? Or what education? do you think about uh, education for Hispanic community? What I think of is it's the key to the future. Uh, because education, in my mind, most problems we have today, the best way to solve them is education. And I really believe that a fundamental, probably the most important challenge in central Washington right now is to provide a good, solid, real education to the Hispanic community, folks who are coming into the community, joining the community, educating their children in Central Washington. And the big challenge we have is to provide a good education for those children. 
Um, Why would you do, you do to do that? Well, I think the most important thing we can do is to provide early childhood education. This is preparing children in what's called the Head Start program, four and five year olds, to prepare them for school. Many children come to school, uh, they may not be English speaking, uh, they may not be accustomed to the school life, and they need to become uh, customized to school to get ready for school. If we don't do that, children come into first grade and they aren't ready and they start late and they stay late and they are always behind and they drop out and then they are unemployed and there's problems. So I really feel that catching them early in life is very, very helpful and I would uh, foster more children being in early child education. What about for those uh, adults uh, Hispanic that don't speak English? Well, I, uh, one of the things that I was able to accomplish in the state legislature is we have an English as a second language program in the community college systems. For instance, at Yakima Valley Community College, we have a training program for adults to learn English as a second language. That was uh, threatened to be cut last year. Uh, some people in the state legislature in Olympia wanted to cut that program so that people could not go to that training program at YVC. Uh, I favor that and protected it and kept it alive. In fact, I spoke at the graduation ceremony here at YVC uh, about a month ago and it was just a wonderful ceremony. Here people come up for instance, there was a fellow from Mexico who was a physician mm -hmm. who needed to learn English so he could get his license and practice medicine here. And uh, he got up and told his story, and it, it just, you know, you just almost want to cry listening to right. people tell these stories about how it's changed their lives. So I'm a real believer in, in those kind of programs. You know that uh, higher education, we talk about colleges, every day is become more expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. what, would you, what is your opinion about that? What, uh, what would you do to encourage Hispanics to go to higher education or to stay and then higher education? Well, I think the thing that you can do to encourage people is to remove roadblocks, to remove hurdles that they have to jump over to do that. One thing we can do is to, uh, the first thing we can do is allow more people into our community colleges. One problem we have right now is that there is a lid, there is a limit in the number of people who are allowed in our college system. And I have been fighting for four years not with total success, to raise that lid so we can get more people who can go to community colleges, Hispanics, Anglos, everyone. That's a, that's a fundamental barrier right now to entrance into the system. Um, and we, we have not won that battle yet. That's probably the first thing. The second thing is, again, I think putting money into the English as a second language program pays great dividends. I think learning English just is a tremendous benefit to folks here. And um, that's something that I'd want to fight for. Gran festival en honor al trabajador campesino este domingo 6 de septiembre en los terrenos de la Feria de Tapnish. No te pierdas la gran presentación especial de Beatriz Adriana, la flor más bonita de México acompañada con banda Beatriz Adriana. Además, la migra y su cantante Sacramento. No te pierdas la gran actuación especial de la banda sinaloense, la auténtica Mazatlán y ocho grupos más. Los esperamos en los terrenos del rodeo de Tapnish este domingo 6 de septiembre. Las puertas se abrirán a las 2 de la tarde. Un evento de promociones Noé. El ser lastimado en el trabajo no tiene que significar la pérdida de salario, el aumento de gastos médicos y el sentirse abandonado. Los abogados en el bufete jurídico de Predileto Harpin tienen más de 30 años de experiencia en la defensa de empleados lastimados y la protección de los derechos del trabajador. La primera consulta es gratis y los honorarios están basados en la suma que Predileto Harpin le ayuda a recobrar.
señor Isley. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you for being with Thank us. Thank you. And uh, good luck to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure that the Hispanic community will get your message through our I hope channel. so. I hope so. And, uh, and good luck to you. Mucha suerte is here. <laughs> you <laughs> can use it. <laughs> Let them decide who is the best candidate. I hope so. Okay? Okay. Thank Muchas you. Muchas gracias, amigos, por estar con nosotros una vez más. Para KCJ Canal 17, yo soy Alfonso Simiano. Telemundo, suba un nuevo mundo, el mundo de Telemundo. Muy buenas noches. That was nice. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, you too. Muchas gracias, amigo. You too. Thank you very much. Yeah.